Silver, who writes the 538 blog and uses polls and other data to create his own forecast model, is here now to talk about the probabilities and what he's looking for tonight. So, Nate, since we were just hearing about undecided voters, sure. um, we don't think there are a lot of undecided voters out there this time. The, the cliche is that undecided voters break for the challenger. Historically, is that true? Um, and we'll have to look at the polls tonight and see, but historically it's not especially been true. Um, there have been years like 1980 when, the president, when President Carter had a very poor approval rating and economy much worse than we had now, and the fundamentals couldn't really carry him to a victory. Um, in recent polls this year, you've seen Obama with an approval rating of about 50%. That's a much healthier number. We've had some better jobs reports lately. So I'm not sure there's, there's too much reason really to think the incumbents would break for, for either candidate in particular. Right. Now, let's start with your final forecast, which has gotten a lot yeah. of attention, as many of your forecasts have recently. You give the president a 90-plus chance of winning uh, the election. Now, that is, is based on a lot of data that you put into the model, but uh, that is not the same as saying that you expect him to win in a landslide election, correct? No, I mean, of that 90%, most of those are very close elections, maybe a little bit like 2004, maybe a reverse 2000, where the popular vote was was tied or he lost it, but he won the Electoral College. Um, but really, it goes to two things. Number one, that toward the end of the campaign in the last week, he started to pull ahead a little bit in the national polls, resolving a discrepancy between the state polls and the national right. polls. The, the national polls recently up until the last couple of weeks, had shown an advantage for Mitt Romney pretty consistently for a little, since, for, since the first small debate. Small advantage by, by, by half a point or a point right after the Denver debate. Um, but Romney, even during that period, uh, never really pulled ahead in, uh, never really pulled ahead in states that he would need to win the Electoral College. He's never really been ahead in Ohio all year. There are other states, Virginia just cl closed its polls, where, where he's maybe, maybe tied in the polls at best. So he has to he has to really run the table as far as avoiding all these states where Obama seems to have an edge in the polls. Maybe the pollsters are off in some of them, but unless there's a pretty clear error across the board, then Obama has a, a rich electoral college strategy. Right. Now, you've had the, the president improving his odds in the model over the last couple of weeks from so 70 to 90. Um, is that just, is that about his polling improving? Is that about time running out for the dynamic to change? Is it about both of those things? It's both. I mean, it's both the fact that uh, the closer you get to election day, the more reliable the, the polls are. But there has been an uptick where if you looked at the swing state polls over the past three or four days, last four days of the campaign, it was hard to find very many Mitt Romney leads in, in any swing state um, where you'd have 20 polls released in a day, you'd see a couple of ties and like 14 Obama leads and, and maybe one or two for, for Romney. And so that speaks to the fact that he has potential problems uh, all over the map. And, and so he's going to have to really run the gauntlet uh, to avoid losing Ohio. Obama's so-called firewall states are still Ohio, Nevada, and Wisconsin. If he wins those, then he's pretty safe. But he could, he could have something go awry in one of those states or in Pennsylvania, and Romney would still have to win Virginia, Colorado, uh, and Florida. At least most of those combinations um, would, would work for Obama if he wins enough of those states. Before we go, uh, Nate, what's your Senate forecast for tonight, and, and what are you watching most closely there? Well, you know, the Indiana Senate race just just closed recently, and that's one of the more interesting ones, where the Republican had seemed to have maybe the slightest edge. He made a series of controversial comments, and that really may have been uh, the nail in the coffin as far as the GOP re regaining the Senate potentially. So whether which, which side will gain ground, we don't know. We think Republicans might pick up a seat or so on net, but they're playing too much defense in states like Massachusetts now and, and Indiana to really uh, to really ensure that they're going to gain enough seats to take over the Senate next year. So you're still expecting the Democrats to hold control? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a pretty safe call, we think. That's also in the 95 percent range or so. Safer, really, less complicated, I think, than the presidency. These races are more individual than, right. than the Electoral College. So that's the prediction. We won't make the calls until later. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. <laughs>